in revenues. We actually expect to loss most of that because of COVID. As you know, COVID would have impacted the tourism sector, earnings from tourism, all that, those taxes that relate to tourism will be down, even non-related, EVAP will be down everything. So we expect a loss between $450 million and $500 million in, in, um, in, in, in revenues on the tax side, which means that that is going to put it things significantly in government financial position. At the same time, because of COVID, starting as way back in March, you, know, you would have known that, you have heard that government had, of course, to step up its expenditure to deal with the COVID pandemic, to contain the virus, identify and, and treat, isolate. So you, you will have heard that government spent money building the, the quarantine center at um, Harrison's Point, outfitting, refurbishing the number of polyclinics, spending money to get um, medical serv um, equipment and supplies testing equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And that was necessary money. In addition to that, as the world continued to be impacted by COVID and the country had to shut down, many persons lost employment, lost jobs, and there was a necessary necessity for government to step up also in household mitigation. And government had a program, uh, implemented a program called the Household Survival Program to the tune of 45 million. And these are all things that Prime Minister will have, have detailed and announced already. I just repeating, part of that include increasing welfare um, payments to the clients of the welfare department who benefit and rely on those, 40% increase in them, another $600 for individual persons, up to 2,000 vulnerable household families, that does part of the household survival program, and adopt a family program, and also continue support for NAS in terms of um, liquidity to meet the claims. Also on the business side, government also stepped up it, um, its efforts and its support because you worst thing, you, what you don't want in a crisis is for business to go to, out of business because it's harder to start a day business than to start a business that have actually slowed down. So you have like the $200 million tourism facility which allow the hoteliers, hotels and everything to join this down period, refurbish, upgrade their product and get ready as we open up. There's a $4 million $40 million VAT fund, which allows businesses to borrow against their previous VAT earnings. Um, we have also started to bring forward as fast track, as much as possible, private sector projects in order to accelerate and mitigate the effects of COVID on the economy. And the effects of COVID economy are quite large. You know, this is a tourism dependent economy. T tourism accounts to at least 45% of all economic activity, both direct, hotel, restaurant, indirect, transportation, taxis, everything and on board the four, almost 6% of our foreign earnings. So those have been response. At the same time, we have continued to see, because of the longer the pandemic maintained, the fact that unemployment numbers are rising as evident from the increase in NAS claims. And as, as far as um, um, yesterday, um, Friday, NAS claims was in excess of 41. Thousand. Now that's claims, not necessarily individual persons, but it represents almost a third of the workforce. And so there's an effort now for government to even go beyond that and try to soak up some of these, this unemployment that exists right now and stem any social effects. And of course, one of the fastest direct ways you can soak up unemployment would be to expand your capital program. In order to expand capital works in areas that are that's not dependent on tourism, for example, spend more money, bring forward expansion, spend money on repairs to schools and government buildings and refurbishing where needed so that persons losing their job in sectors can get employment there. Spend some money on road repairs. Um, what about refurbishment of markets, fish markets, food markets and those areas. Um, beautification of the areas, cutting down bushes, environmental work and the sanitation program. And these are all ways which government can expand its capital program, which will do two things. It will create employment and help soak up some of those unemployment that happen in the moment. And it will also allow us to start to get some growth, at least mitigate the effects of tourism. So when tourism comes in, persons are ready to pick off. Now, to do that, government needs to find an additional hundred or so million dollars in fiscal space that it can expand that capital expenditure. Now, I want to explain what I mean by fiscal space. And it comes important to understand the program. 
there's a difference between fiscal space and financing. Indeed, government is not looking for financing now, it's looking for space. What's the difference? Imagine we have a 40-foot container, and everything you spend goes in that container, right? So in, if, if it was in your household, it would be the money you spend on foods and clothes and your mortgage, your um, car loan, and any other thing, payments, support this person, that all is, is put in your expenditure container. Government expenditure container, 40-foot container, will be what it spend on wages, what it spend on goods and services like computers and other equipment and water, different things like that. What it spends on interest payments on its debt. What it spends on transfers of money to help support university and the hospital and the transport board, that would be in there. Also will be in there is what it spends on capital. So that 40-foot container, and the reason why how, how, why it's 40 foot and not 100 foot is because in terms of your expenditure, that space, you have lost 4,400 to 500 million dollars on your revenue, and at the same time, you don't want to go and begin running large fiscal deficits and make your fiscal position unsustainable. If we cast back our minds, but you start a work program that started two years from, from today, back roughly two years, one of the problems we had was the unsustainable fiscal, where for the last 10 or so years prior to that, the government ran a fiscal balance averaging 7%. Now, if that's your household and you're, you're running a deficit, a fiscal deficit, it means that your expenditures are more than your income. And you know, anytime your expenditures more income, you've got to find some way to find that money. You either borrow it from somebody, you borrow it from a bank, a boyfriend, girlfriend, somebody give you some money, or, I mean, that's the only options, right? In other words, you create debt. So running fiscal balance creates debts, and create debt kills the economy, we expand that again. So therefore, we don't want to widen that. So to maintain fiscal prudence, another word of fiscal discipline, your container is conditioned at a specific size. So all 40 foot container got in wages, and it got in capital expenditure, right? Why I say it's not financing? Because imagine that's your 40 foot container. I, give, I tell you, have all the money in the world at your disposal. You are the Bill Gates of the Caribbean. But all you could spend, the only condition is that anything you spend got to fit in that container. Then you don't have a finance problem, agree? You have a space problem in terms of your fiscal space. Everybody get an analogy? So in order for you to spend, you got all your money in the world, ain't it up to you? But in order for you to spend, you need to replace in that. So for us now, wages is in that container. And Everything in that contains is recorded on a cash basis. So last year when government was total wage bill, last fiscal year was 806 million, right? And therefore, if you could spend less on your wage bill, and we look at other places besides your wage, we look at goods and services, digitization, saving on paper, saving on different things. But on the wage bill, if you could spend, say, $100 million less, now all of a sudden you've got some space in your container, right? that you can put into capital. So it's a matter of removing the things in container to make more efficient spending. It's not an issue of finance. And to tell you it's not an issue of finance, as of yesterday, we have just a few dollars shy of 1.7 billion in reserves. Tomorrow, Barbados goes to the IMF board for the fourth review of the BERT program. We have achieved our targets and we expect to pass the IMF board with endorsement. That means that by tomorrow afternoon, IMF will make available 49 million US dollars plus another 19 million US dollars in support of our efforts to combat the COVID pandemic. That's about 140 million US dollars, close to 300 million Barbados dollars that you will add to that 1.7 to bring about 2 billion. And we spend on average 17 million dollars a month in imports, so that's about 24, 25 weeks of imports. Compared to what we had before the BERT program, $420 million or just about three or four weeks of import cover. So it's not a finance problem, it's a space problem. And so the design of this program is supposed to solve two problems, create space and at the same time protect employment in the public sector. Because you, you don't want to add to the employment, you want to protect space, employment in the public sector. And at the same time, by shifting money from the, exp the, the expenditure, the, the wages component to the capital, you can create jobs because other people say get employed. You follow the logic? Yes? So 
we, we, the idea is that if you're going to pay a worker, let's say the wage bill last year, I told us how much, just make sure you pay attention. Huh? 806 million. And if we could reduce, take 100 from that by paying the workers the majority in cash and a small portion in bonds, I create a fiscal space. Because all of a sudden, I only, re let's say 100 million, I, re I record now 706 million, as opposed to 800 million. Because remember, things that goes into my expenditure container are only cash expenditure. You follow me? The 100 million bond goes into the bucket of debt to deal with at a, a day to day. So now I create 100 million space. What about the worker? The worker still get his full salary. The only difference is that instead of taking $100 in, 100% in cash, they get a large proportion, 97% in a bond, I mean in, ca in, in cash, and the other 10% or so in a bond, right? And that means the worker take home in, the, in, in all is still the same amount and achieve the two objectives. So this program is designed to achieve the two objectives. On one hand, create fiscal space. On the other hand, protect employment. And the third principle is the natural Bayesian principle of burden sharing. When you, when the worker now still gets his hundred, so the worker was working for 4,000. He gets 3,500 in cash, for example, and 500 as a bond. He still has 400, 400 disposable.